In this video, I'll show how I prepare and paint my utility and telephone poles. I also go into some things to consider when running wire lines over streets and railroad tracks or over each other. So let's get started. There are a couple of commercial offerings for telephone and power poles in N-Scale, but there seems to be a bit of confusion regarding the look of different types of wire lines. Atlas and Bachmann over complete plastic telephone poles. The Atlas version has 4 insulators per cross arm and Bachmann has 6 insulators per cross arm. If you compare these to photos of telephone poles along railroad right-of-ways, you'll notice that wire lines with multiple cross arms usually have 8 or even more insulators per cross arm and the insulators themselves are relatively small. Interestingly, Showcase Miniatures offers wide metal kits for power poles with cross arms that look a lot like telephone line cross arms and include pole mounted transformers. Another option are 3D printed cross arms and bamboo knitting needles for the poles themselves. The 2mm needles vary between 1.8mm and 2.3mm in diameter depending on the manufacturer and are a good option for modeling utility poles. Bamboo skewers are typically 3mm in diameter and are visibly too thick for utility poles in end scale. Another thing to consider is the height of wires over tracks and roads. Roads that see truck traffic require a minimum height of 18 feet above the road surface. That is about 35mm or about 1 and 3 eighths of an inch in end scale. Railroad track typically requires a vertical clearance of at least 25 feet over the railhead for communication wires and a little more for most power lines. That works out to about 50 mm or 2 inches in end scale. When modeling power lines on utility poles, you also need to keep in mind that there is a neutral wire running just below the level of the pole mounted transformers. The neutral wire usually isn't held up on insulators or cross arms, so there's nothing that can be reasonably modeled in end scale, but it's good to remember it's there. I like to allow for about 5 scale feet of wire zack. That equates to 10 mm or 0.5 inches in end scale. There is no real need to measure this, since the stack of the three cross arms on Bachmann or Atlas poles is roughly that tall, so it's easy to just eyeball the stack. The typical height for utility poles is between 35 and 40 feet. For my current project, I'm planning to have a power line cross over the railroad track with a telephone line running next to the track. Both wire lines are going to share one utility pole when they cross over each other. While power and communication lines only require 4 feet minimum clearance when crossing over each other, line worker safety requires more clearance when the lines share a pole. The safety zone extends 30 inches down from the neutral wire. For that reason the power lines are going to run at the top of 40 feet tall poles, while the cross arms for the telephone wires will be mounted at a height of approximately 25 feet. I'll use the showcase miniatures cross arms for the telephone line and 3D printed cross arms for the power lines. I removed two of the insulators from the 3D printed cross arms to leave only the insulators for the three phases of the primary power line. The Showcase miniature cross arms bend rather easily, so I'm not quite sure they are going to be able to withstand the dangers of being close to giant human hands. Newsflash from the future. Looks like they really are not. I don't even know what happened to this one. I think my next JPS haul will need to include some more 3D printed cross arms. After cutting the poles to the required length, I use a fine saw blade to distress the pole and give it a bit of texture. This also helps to hide any markings or molding aids. Then I glue the cross arms to the poles and paint the entire assembly with Tamiya XF52 flat earth as a base layer. I do the same thing when using either the Bachmann or Atlas poles to end up with a similar paint job on all poles. Then I proceed to paint the pole in XF19 sky grey. I try to let more of the underlying brown show through in the lower portion of the pole to give it a more aged and faded look at the top. After this I dry brush a bit of XF57 buff to add a bit more color variation to the pole. The last step in painting the poles is a thin wash of XF1 flat black applied to the lower portion of the pole. When the paint is dry, it's time to glue the pole mounted transformers to any utility poles I want to have transformers on. I use a mix of XF10 flat brown and sky grey for the transformers. 
The mix varies depending on whether I want the transformer to be more on the grey or the brown side. Now it's time to paint the insulators on the cross arms. I paint the insulators for power lines either XF2 flat white or flat brown, whichever makes them stand out more in any given setting. The insulators for telephone lines receive a base color of XF16 flat aluminium and a final layer of X25 clear green. All that's left to do now is wait for the paint to dry and then glue the finished utility poles in place. Oh, and another update from the future. Shapeways delivered the printed cross arms way faster than I thought. So here's the pole with the replacement cross arm in place and after painting. I think it ended up a bit oversized. Maybe I'll have another go at it at some point, but not today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any remaining questions, let me know in the comments.